Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video from NetPix. And today we're going to talk about iron condor trades and options. And what is that? Well, it's a type of options trade. And it's generally used when a trader believes that the stock is going to experience very little volatility during the life of the contract. So in this video, we're going to talk about what they are, how they work, some of the pros and cons that are associated with trading them. And while we're moving on here, if you could hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified when these videos go live, be much appreciated. So how do we set this up? So an iron condor, what we do is we sell one out of the money put options and we buy one out of the money put options with a lower strike price. And at the same time, we sell one out of the money call options and we buy another one that's out of the money with a higher strike price. I know that sounds confusing, but as we go on, I think you'll catch this. The key that we have to follow here is that all these options, they have to have the same expiration date. So by selling the two options and buying the other two, we are actually protected from large moves in either direction. That's because we're still going to collect a premium even if that stock price falls or rises within a certain price range. So again, as mentioned, we sell one out of the money put. We buy one out of the money put with a lower strike. We sell one out of the money call options and we buy one out of the money call option with a higher strike price, okay? But if that stock price falls outside of the range that we call the profit window, we're gonna lose. That range is defined by the strike price of the call options that we're selling and the strike price of the put option that we are also selling. So we need price to stay inside that range to make any money. Now, it's really important that you manage your risk when you're trading iron condors. And you got to make sure you set your trades up in a way that you're comfortable with those losses because you're going to lose. But one of the great things about iron condors is you can trade them in any type of market. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? No problem. You can trade them. That's because you're not really betting on which direction it's going to move, but rather how much it's going to move. And again, like any other type of trade out there, there's going to be risks involved. The biggest risk is you could lose money if that stock price moves outside of your range. Another risk is that implied volatility could decrease after you enter your trade, and that's going to reduce the amount of premium that you're going to collect. The benefits, first, bullish market, bearish market, sideways market, doesn't matter. We just need price to stay inside of a set range. We also have downside protection, but we can also make some pretty decent gains to the upside. Third, low risk way to trade options because your maximum loss is limited to the difference between the strike prices of the two options that you sell minus the premium that you receive. So let's go a little bit deeper into risks. There's time decay. because As we talked about before, time decay is probably one of the biggest risks when you trade iron condors or options in general. And this is because the value of options tend to decrease as their expiration date gets closer. So to mitigate this risk, you could sell the options that are further out from expiration. So this is going to give you more time for that stock price to move in that range. Sell options that are closer to being at the money. So this means that they're going to have less time decay because they're going to have some intrinsic value. Second risk, there's volatility spikes. And that just means there's going to be a sudden increase in the amount of price movement for security. And these spikes can come out of nowhere. Unexpected news about a company or a sector or even the economy. So to mitigate this risk, you can do one of two things. Set wider boundaries for your trade, right? The profit window. Use stop loss orders. That's just an order you place with your broker to sell a security when it reaches a certain price. Now, we're going to use weekly or monthlies. Well, we can use either or. But what's important is that you ensure that the options that you're trading have good liquidity because you want to get filled at good prices. You get filled at bad prices over time, that's going to have a huge impact on your profit and loss. But for those just starting out, we suggest monthly options about 20 to 60 days out from where you put the trade on. And as you gain experience, move into weeklies with the understanding that these are less forgiving than the longer term options. So how do we set them up at NetPix? Now, whether we're using weekly or monthlies, we look to sell the call and put option that has a 65% chance of closing out of the money. We look at buying the call and put that are further out of the money. So we look to put the trade on for about 50% of the width of the strike prices. So what's our profit? Okay, these are not home run trades. Our max profit is what we're going to collect when we put the trade on. So let's say we sell for a dollar. Well, the most we can make is a dollar per share or a hundred dollars per the contract, as long as price stays inside of our profit window. Now we talked about the overall risks of iron condors, but let's look at how we deal with risks for the individual trade. 
Now remember, these are risk defined. That's why they're so awesome. So we know the most that we can lose is the difference between the strike prices minus the credits we receive when opening the trade. So imagine we sell an iron condor. It's $2 wide for a dollar. Our risk is $1. So $100 for the contract. Well, wait a second. If we risk a dollar and only make a dollar, is that not a bad ratio? Not really. You know, these are safer trades than just buying calls and puts. They have a higher probability of success and we get to make money five different ways. You know, we would even look to risk three to make one because over time, our data backs these trades up. And I said five different ways to profit. If that stock goes up, that stock goes down, that stock goes sideways, we're going to make money as long as that price stays inside of our profit window. Remember, the strike price of the call and put options we sold. That's our window. When we sell an iron condor, we make money five different ways, right? If time K adding up, decreasing volatility, it's no problem because we're going to make money when that happens as well. Now, at NetPix, we do not hold to expiration, although that is the only way that we can ever book full profits on these trades. For us, if we can keep between 50 and 75% of the max profit we can make, we're going to close that trade. So let's say we made a dollar when we opened the trade, but we can close this trade for 25 to 50 cents. That's acceptable to us. So let's walk through this. This is an older trade, okay? but it's a really great example for this video. And it's the Russell 2000 ETF. So at this time, we believe the price would be fairly neutral over the next month. So we use the November 20 monthlies. They had 44 days left before they expire. So here's the steps that we took. $165 out of the money call option had a 65% chance of closing out of the money. And we sold that option as part of the spread. We bought the $167 call at the same time. Now we're in a risk-defined trade to the upside. We had a $151 out of the money put option, had a 65% chance of closing out of the money, and we sold that one. We also bought the $149 one at the same time to make sure we have a risk-defined trade on the downside. So remember, when you price out this iron condor, we need to collect 50% of the width of the strikes. Now there's a $2 difference between those strike prices. So we want to collect a dollar credit. So looking at our first example, the iron condor is trading for $1.33. Now this would give us a bigger profit potential, but we would rather adjust the strike prices of the options further away from the current stock price. When we do this, it may give us a lower profit potential, but it gives us a bigger profit window and a higher probability of success in this trade. Because if that profit window is too tight, you know, the price has a better chance of breaking out of that range. A wider window is going to give us more flexibility with price movements because we never know what's going to happen. So how do we do this? We move both the call option and the put option further away from the current stock price. So now our new setup, we sold the 170, 172 call spread. So we sell the 170 call and bought the 172 call at the same time. We sold the 148, 146 put spread. So that means we sold the 148 put. And we bought the 146 put at the same time. So that is going to accomplish our goal of collecting the dollar that we're looking for, which is 50% of the width of the strike prices. Yeah, we gave up some profit potential on this adjustment, but what did we get? We got a bigger profit window on the trade. So now we've got more room for it to move to the upside and to the downside, and we're still going to make money on this risk-defined trade if it stays in that window. So by collecting 50%, of the width of the strikes, we are left with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio on the trade. So quick breakdown, sell the spread to open the trade for a dollar, gave us a credit of $100 for the spread. That's our max profit. Our risk is calculated by the $2 difference between the strike price minus the dollar we collected as we just talked about. So the most that we're going to lose is 100 bucks. Where's break even? On the upside, $171 is our break even price. All we do is take the 170 call option strike that we sold, add the dollar that we collected. Price moves to the downside, 147 is our break even price. That's the 148 strike of the put we sold, subtracting the dollar we collected when we opened the trade. Now, the Russell 2000, that can move higher, can move lower, stay sideways. As long as price stays between our break even prices, we are going to make money. Now, if you're just getting started with options, you probably need a little bit of help. You can trade these markets. You can make money, but you also don't have to sit at the screen all day. So if you're new, we have this PDF guide. It's a one-day options trading strategy. It's our eight-minute cookbook. You can trade today, exit the trades tomorrow. It's a quick download. You get access to the high-performance markets that we always look at. Take the profits in a day. Um, we want to help you get your financial goals, right? These are tough times right now. You can download this guide. It's totally free. 
Link is above, link is below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit like, subscribe to our channel. Really appreciate that. And we'll talk to you soon.